Hey guys, I'm Kusha, and today I'm going to be talking about how your prior injuries, physical injuries, could be affecting your mindset. And with regard to things like negativity, pessimism, maybe short fuse, if you, you or someone you know is experiencing those types of behaviors, it could actually be from an old injury of theirs. And I'll explain right now, scientifically, how that's happening. And what I'm going to show you is really how your brain and your body are connected, especially when we talk about psychology. And so, let me try to draw a brain here. This is gonna be my artistic picture of the brain. And so, when it comes to your brain, you have primarily three areas that we're gonna be referring to today, where these signals, we're gonna talk a little bit about the different signals that are coming from an old injury. I'm gonna show you where they go. So you have three primary areas. You have the, the higher level thinking part of the brain, so this is your cortex. This is the part of the brain where, you know, the more evolved, higher level thinking, executive function thinking, that's where that happens. And when we feel pain, if we feel, let's say, for example, let's say you were in a car accident a few years ago. <laughs> and you experience chronic low back pain as a result of that old injury. If you feel the sensation of pain, that's probably because those pain signals are making it to the cortex. Get out of my head! Get out of my head! Now you have two other areas. You have the thalamus. So the thalamus here, this is like a relay station for signals in the brain. Thalamus is just a relay station, so you have signals that go there. And then you also have signals that go here. This is your limbic system. Your limbic system is that emotional part of the brain. You know, let's say, for example, you know, you're on a plane and you feel a little bit of turbulence, immediately you get this feeling of anxiety and fear. And then all, you know, then all these, you know, movies you've seen of planes crashing and whatnot. A break! Hold the red handle! I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you. Start playing off in your head, in your imagination. If that's happening, that's because you're triggering a response through the limbic system. So that's the emotional part of the brain. So now what I wanna talk about are the different types of signals that are sent to the brain uh, from the site of injury or from the body to the brain. These are called ascending pathways, also known as afferent pathways. These are basically anytime, let's say somebody touches you or you get a bee sting. Let me get rid of it. No, no, don't move. That's an afferent pathway because you're, you have receptors in the tissues that are, that are seeking signals, like a satellite. They're seeking signals and they're waiting to receive a signal. So when they get it, when they get a stimulus, that stimulus is then received and transmitted to the brain to where it can be uh, integrated and comprehended so the brain can make sense of it. What is that? When we talk about the different types of signals, we have different types of receptors. We have stretch receptors. These are mechanoreceptors. So we have, uh, we have receptors in our tissues, in our muscles, and in our skin that sense stretch. So when they feel a stretch, the brain knows about it and gets a sensation of it. We also have baroreceptors. These are pressure receptors. So our brain knows when there's pressure being uh, placed on the tissue. We also have chemoreceptors. And these are chemical changes in the blood. If there's a chemical change in the blood, whether it be from nutrition or maybe it be from something else, maybe uh, inflammation, then the brain is, all, again, it's going to know about it because of chemoreceptors from this receptor type. The other ones we have, we have electromagnetic receptors, so your brain can actually sense EMF. Um, and then you also have the one we're going to mainly talk about today are nociceptors. So nociceptors are threat receptors. So your brain is analyzing threats. It'll last too long. It's the threat. When we're talking about nociception, nociception is happening all the time. It's happening right now. If you're sitting watching this right now, you're having constant nociception from all areas of the body, and these signals will go to the brain. So let's say, for example, again, you were in a car accident a few years ago, you have low back, uh, a low back injury, and that area, the lumbar spine, is gonna be sending a lot of nociceptive, uh, nociceptive signals to the brain. In fact, you actually have more nociceptors in the lumbar spine than any other receptors. You have more of those than anywhere else. And that's, a, that's kind of the unique thing about the lumbar spine is that it has a lot of nociceptors because it's a highly guarded area. It's very, very protected. Where do these nociceptive signals go? Well, a third, one third goes to your emotional part of the brain, the limbic system. A third goes to the thalamus, 
and a third goes to the cortex. Remember we said only when it makes it here, we actually feel the sensation of pain. Ouch, my back hurts. <laughs> well, you're only going to feel that if the nociception reaches a level to where the signals get to the cortex and become important enough for you to deal with right now. Well, what's happening here? Well, you have two-thirds of the signals living in the emotional part of the brain, essentially. So if you know someone that maybe has you know, a short temper, maybe they're just really agitated all the time, they're irritable all the time. Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. It could be that that injury, that low back injury or whatever it may be, especially if it's a low back injury because like we said, this is a, there's a lot of nociceptors there. Th those nociceptive signals are living in their limbic system and thalamus, causing them to have these emotional outbreaks, emotional escape that is gonna be in the form of these negative behaviors or negative mindset, pessimism, and so forth. So neuroscience shows that you can actually become a different person. You, be you can become a whole new person on a psychological level and on a behavioral level when you change your physiology. And in this case, by improving lumbar mobility through uh, actual physical exercises to improve mobility, through drills for the inner ear. Uh, we won't really talk about it today, but there are actual tracks that go straight from your inner ear down the spine that affects your posture. And in, in combination of doing these things, it gave the brain good information, so there was good neuroplastic change. So these signals, the brain essentially said, you know what, I'm gonna take these signals and I'm going to remove some of them because this is no longer as threatening anymore. So there was a, uh, somewhat of an inoculation and a reduction of those nociceptive signals. And as a result, the behavior changed. So if you're stuck, if you feel like you know, yourself or someone you know close to you is stuck and they keep hitting this wall and they're just they're trying to change, maybe they're reading personal development books, they're going to seminars, they're doing all these things, but they just cannot get that permanent sticky change, they just cannot get the, the momentum to stay or the inertia to stick, this is probably why. There's probably something happening with their physiology. But again, my whole point here is that there's a distinct connection between the mind and the body. They go hand in hand. So if there's something, something happening in the body where your brain sees it as important, then it's going to live in this area and it's going to have a physical manifestation. It's going to have some type of output. One analogy that I really like, I learned this from a guy named Dr. Cobb from Z Health. He taught me this analogy a long time ago. He said that the brain is a lot like a GPS and the, the, the GPS wants to do what? It wants to create a clear map of where you are relative to space and time and it has to integrate information from different satellites. The first satellite being your vision system, your eyes, because that's the fastest information source. The second uh, satellite being your vestibular system, your inner ear, that's your sense of equilibrium and, and uh, your sense of orientation. And then the third being something called your proprioceptive system, which is basically a fancy word for your body's nerve endings. So these three satellites take inputs, visual input, inner ear input, and body uh, input like we talked about. They take all this information, they go to the brain, and the brain has to make sense of this information in order to create a clear map. Haven't you ever heard of that guy, what, what's his name? Pirate guy, one-eyed Willie. Why does the brain want to create a clear map? Because again, your brain's number one job is safety and prediction. And before performance, before strength, before mobility, before fat loss, that always takes a back seat to safety and prediction. So if I can get better information to the brain and reduce and inoculate threats through training, then my brain will create a clear map and as my brain creates a clear map, those threats are reduced. And so my brain says, okay, you know what? I can turn the knob down on threat, uh, and now I can turn the knob up on strength and performance and metabolism and et cetera. So I just, the, the key behind all this, why I want to share this is because I just want you to shift your paradigm from you know, the physical point of view, which is really a, the whole fitness industry right now is really focused on training the body for the sake of training the body. And what I want you to be looking at is, you know, how can I make an effect in the brain that'll uh, help make a change systemically in the entire body? Because your brain is like the body's CEO. I'm just waiting for you in your office. Wonderful, fantastic. Would you cancel my two o'clock? So if I can affect the brain, then I can get not only very quick changes, but I can get very permanent changes. And then again, like we talked about, those changes will not only affect the body, but they also affect everything, your psychology, your behaviors, your habits, your interpersonal relationships, your work, et cetera. Where are the wires? 
exactly. Thanks for watching. In the next video, I'm going to show you three exercises that you can do for your eyes, your inner ear, and your body for the key areas of the body that take up a lot of brain space and a lot of importance in the brain that could be affecting your psychology. <music>